Hi, Carl here for Pro V TV, and today I have got my hands on the Canon EOS R. I am ridiculously excited about this, like the little camera nerd that I am, because this is perhaps the biggest thing that Canon have done for 30 years. I mean, this is an entire new system, with their new RF mount, and this is the first camera in that system, the EOS R. So what I thought I'd do with this first little hands-on meeting is to get you guys a chance to have some of your questions answered and to share with you some nice little touches that I have instantly spotted after playing with it. Um, I am still going to do a full review and probably a, a more simple overview as well in the future, so there's lots more video content to come. This is by no means an actual overview or review of the camera. This is more of a first impression slash question and answer session. So. Let's get started with some of the things which I've seen you guys asking online. So the first one that I've seen people asking about a lot is the mount. So this is the new RF mount, and yes, you can still use EF and EFS lenses with it, with one of these. They make three different adapters. This one, which is the nice one with a control ring, one a basic one, and one which has a drop-in filter slot on the side. So the control ring is something to do with these new lenses. So all these lenses, this is a 50 millimeter prime, have got your normal focus dial, they've got zoom if they're a zoom like this one, and then a control ring on the front, which is assignable and it can be used to control your aperture, your ISO, your shutter speed, your exposure compensation, all sorts of different things. Mostly I think people will be using this for aperture. Um, and obviously that's not on EF lenses, and so when you use EF lenses or EFS lenses with this adapter, you get that same control ring, which is really nice. It means that when you're using the camera like this, you can change your um, aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO all without moving your fingers at all. No shuffling around the body or anything like that. You've got complete control like this, which I really like. So obviously we're a video channel and a lot of you have been asking about the video specs. It can do C-Log. Um, it is C-Log 1 because it's primarily designed for the internal 8-bit capabilities of this. But although if you do use that HDMI socket out, and that's a mini HDMI, out to something like a Atmos Ninja 5 or another external recorder, you're going to be able to get 10-bit, 422 and BT 2020 color space and Canon Log. It doesn't upgrade to Canon Log 2 or Canon Log 3 when you, you up in 10 bit, it is still Canon Log 1, but you do get that wider color gamut and um, 10 bits of data. Um, unfortunately though, this does disable the card slot, so it's not a way of getting around it only having one card slot. Um, so that, I was a little bit disappointed with that. So if you're setting it up with an external recorder and you want 10 bits, you are relying just on the recording inside the recorder there's no internal recording as well. But that will get around the 29 minute um, maximum record time, because obviously when you're just sending HDMI out, there's no record limit. When you're recording internally in the 8-bit modes, there is a half an hour record limit. So something I've seen people say an awful lot online is that there isn't any image stabilization other than in the lens. That is true, and it also isn't true. Um, it certainly doesn't have a free floating stabilized sensor like some other cameras that we've seen like the Sony ones. The sensor is fixed inside, but it's actually an entire new system which, for image stabilization which we haven't really seen yet. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how it compares for video. Basically, this has been come about because of the new mount. Because of the RF mount, it can put 40 times the amount of data talking between the camera body and the lens itself. So it really has expanded what Canon can do with communication between the two. And with image stabilization, what that's meant is that the lenses with IS in them have got a gyro sensor and the camera sensor data has got a sensor in it as well. And it uses the mixture of the camera sensor data and the um, lens gyroscope in the actual lens to control that IS system much better. And so when you're pairing one of these with an IS lens, specifically the RF mount IS lenses, because they need that new sensor inside them, you are gonna get fantastic video stabilization. Five stops of stills image stabilization, and the video, I've just done some quick tests now, and it does seem really, really stable. It seems, from a quick looking at the back of the screen, 
just as stable for still shots and handheld like this as a stabilized sensor on say the Sony's or the GH5's or something like that. So yes, it doesn't have IBIS, but this could potentially be just as good, if not potentially better, depending on the way the technology expands. So that's gonna be really interesting to see. It is though limited to RF mount lenses and specifically RF mount lenses with IS in them. So that is the drawback. But I think complaining that it doesn't have IBIS in it, like I initially it was my first reaction, might perhaps be unfair. It'd be really interesting to do some proper tests on that. The camera definitely seems full of these lovely little design features, that really nice little touches. For example, the one that I was probably most pleased to see is that when you take the lens off like that and the camera's off, they've got this little mechanical shutter that comes down to cover the sensor. So I can wave this about without a lens on it and I'm not gonna get dust on my sensor. When I'm shooting with other brands of cameras, I'm forever getting little dust on sensor. I have to carry a little blower with me everywhere I go and constantly be blowing the sensor off because now with a mirrorless system, you don't have the physical mirror like we did on DSLRs to protect the sensors from dust. So that is a really, really nice little design touch. There's also a whole load of other ones like how easily the lens mount clicks on and the fact that the first four pins, which is quite, gonna be quite hard to see in a video, but the first four electronic pins are actually recessed back. And so what that means is that when you're putting it on like that, those first four pins are the ones that get all of the wear and tear from that. And so Canon have obviously found with their EF lenses over the 30 years that they've been servicing them, that when it comes to the electronic pins, that's what fails and recessing like that is gonna help. So really nice little design tweaks and features that are gonna make a big difference for over the next say 30 years of this lifespan of this mount. The other thing that you notice straight away is the build quality. I probed Canon a little bit on this and it's actually because this has got a full magnesium alloy body inside it. That's the same as you would get on say the Cinema EOS lineup or the 1D series. So actually in terms of physical construction, this is perhaps even better than the 5D series has been. Um, it certainly feels much more sturdy than any other mirrorless camera that I've used. It's really nice and rugged in your hands. There's no play in the lens mounts. All the buttons feel really, really solid and responsive. I, it's just a really lovely built camera. So Canon do seem to have put some weather sealing on here, perhaps not quite as good as the 5D line, but certainly better than what we've seen in some other mirrorless cameras. I think they say it's drip and dust resistant, but really this is gonna take a little bit of a beating. I wouldn't leave it outside in the rain by any means, but it should hold up to the rigors of professional use. So in true Canon style, there's always something that disappoints with the new product release. And in here, it's the crop. There is a crop in 4K video. It crops into about 1.6, 1.7 times. Um, now that is for quality reasons. Canon explained this back when they released the 5D and that had a crop. Um, they are taking an actual true UHD readout of the pixels in the middle of the sensor. That's so that there isn't any down um, line skipping or anything like that and you can get the best quality from the sensor. It is frustrating, I wish they gave us the mixture between them, but I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, it's a very similar crop factor to you see on, on video cameras anyway, like their Cinema EOS lineup. And so if you're using it as a B camera for say a C200 or a C300 Mark II, that shouldn't be um, an issue because it will match, if anything, better than if you had a full frame. When it does bother me, is when I'm using this as my only camera and constantly swapping between stills and video mode, which I do quite often do when I'm looking for a hybrid camera. Um, now, the reason that that annoys me is because the focal length changes. So say I might have my 50 millimeter on and that's gonna be giving me very different focal lengths in video as it is in stills. So it is a problem. I, I, it's definitely not a deal breaker for me. Whether or not it's a deal breaker for you, you've got to decide, but um, I wish it wasn't there, but I can definitely live with it. One thing that's really interesting is the lens mount, which has got an ND in it. We don't have it here, it's not available till January, so we don't know all of the details about it. 
But what it's gonna do is it's a lens mount like that with a slot in the side, which you can either put a polarizing filter in or an ND filter in, and then it's got a wheel on the side of the lens adapter to change that. So they have said it is gonna be variable. We don't know whether it's gonna be stepped or stepless. So for example, Sony's variable ND gives you this smooth um, stepless transition between different um, strengths. Whereas this might be stepped or it might be stepless, we don't know yet. So that's gonna be really interesting to see. But there's always been the big problem with little cameras like this. And one of the main reasons to step up to bigger video cameras is a lack of internal NDs for convenience. Normally with cameras like this, you've got to screw something onto the front or have a matte box or something like that. So having it in the lens mount, as a, a variable ND, which you can then just pull out of the lens mount and cover it with something to take ND out and go clear, could be really, really useful. This definitely seems to be one of the best autofocus systems I've seen from Canon. And they've made some really great little adjustments to it for compared to some of the competitors. Now, all of this is possible because of this increased data throughput, which I've talked about quite a lot between the camera body and the lens. It can transfer about 40 times as much data as the EF lens system could. And one thing that's really interesting is that when you take and you focus a camera, um, a still image, what it's gonna do is as it's focusing, it's gonna open all the iris all the way up, focus and then close it back down. Now you're not gonna see that on the thing, but that's what it's gonna do. Because some of the problem, like for example, Sony's system, is that when you want to take an autofocus at a lower aperture, say F8 and above, maybe F11, something like that, um, it's harder for an autofocus system to focus with that small little aperture. Um, and on, the, on their system, that aperture just stays the same. Whereas on Sony's, on sorry, on Canon's, you're gonna set it to F11, you're gonna be looking through F11 to get your depth of field preview, and then as you focus, it's gonna open all the way up or to where it just needs to to get the best autofocus performance, focus you in a split second, and then close it back down. You're barely gonna notice it even happened, but that's gonna give you much more solid performance of autofocus at smaller f-stops. Now, they made a big deal about how it can focus well in low light and all the rest of it, but I haven't seen that talked about online yet. And that is a really nice little touch. Now, mirrorless cameras can often feel a little bit small. Um, this, as a grip, feels really comfortable. It is a hard ledge down there. I wish it was slightly more molded, but Actually, that's the bit that bothers me the least. It's really nice and curved down here. And more importantly, all my fingers can fit on it. On some cameras, my little fingers often hanging off the bottom and I don't really have exceptionally very large hands. And so that can be a bit of a problem. On this one, it fits perfectly in my hand there and I get quick, quick access to everything. And it feels very strong and stable. I've definitely got a firm grip on the camera. So hopefully that's cleared up some of your questions and shown you some of the nice little touches with this camera that doesn't come across in a spec sheet. Um, I really enjoyed my first time actually trying this out and I'm so excited to try it out more when it's available. Um, if you've got any more questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And if you want to pre-order one, of course, the links are in the description down below this video. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.